Ken Husky, I'm out here in the San Gregorio Pass. I'm standing right next to a brand new solar farm that is under construction. Now once you get your permits to build a solar farm, you show up for phase one, which is the cutting and the grubbing. That's where you bring in heavy equipment and you knock down all of the plant material. When the equipment shows up, that's going to disturb the wildlife, of course, and the birds will fly away. And the mammals, like the coyotes, for example, and kit foxes and such, are going to run away. We call that passive relocation. Now the reptiles aren't going to be able to run away like that, particularly during the winter months like this, because it's cold, they're ectothermic, which means they're cold-blooded. They're going to be underground in a state of rumation. They're sleeping away during the winter hours, and they can get plowed up in that process. Before you build a project that might have an area like desert tortoises, then you practice something called active relocation. Biologists come out here and try to identify where they're at, collect them, and relocate them elsewhere to get them out of harm's way. Reptiles are normally trapped. So what happens is when they do stage two, which is the rough grading, they bring in the tractors and the, and the graders, they begin to grade the property, a lot of the reptiles can indeed be plowed up from under the earth. So whether the relocation is active relocation or passive relocation, in either case, the animals that were on this property are now displaced. They take up residence elsewhere in the desert. The new areas, the new habitat that they move into, though, is already occupied by existing species. So what that does is it creates complications, because now you have more species that are competing for a limited food supply. Here's why that's so important. In California, the 20 major solar projects that we've already authorized are going to consume 118,000 acres of real estate. That's some 184 square miles. 184 square miles of ecosystem is going to be taken out of production. That's why we have to be very wise and selective in approving projects and making sure that we can reduce their impact on the environment. When you build these new projects, you also have to build roads to reach access and also power lines to bring electricity out of the farm to make it onto the grid, which also impacts the environment. Now, in fairness, I want to point out that on the other side of this fence today, there are people working. These projects create jobs. And not only immediate jobs here, but these people, of course, are going to be buying food in restaurants locally and gasoline. This project is also going to be buying some supplies locally. And these projects are going to pay taxes. So when we choose which projects we authorize, we want to make sure that we balance the impact on the environment with the need that we have for renewable.